I have to look for it. It's definitely in the in the house, but I must have moved it or used it for something. I was working on something and she borrowed it. Oh. Yeah. Here's my little autograph book. This will just show you what people did in those days. Yeah, that's PS7 in the Bronx. In the Bronx. Lovely. I think it's still there. If all the boys were across the sea, what a good swimmer Margie would be. <laughs> anyway, that was life in this very different world. <laughs> oh, that's my grandfather. There's, there he is again, the escape. And there he is as a young man, and that's my grandmother. And she is a little girl. Okay. Oh, this is very important. See, this is, again, I think you would have this today. This says in German that my grandfather has to give up all his stocks, American metal, his stocks and everything to the Nazi government, or he'll go to jail. This was shortly before he left, everything. They just say it openly, you know, that's what they did. They de depossessed you of everything. And here he is fleeing. This is the picture. Can you imagine being dressed like that? He went over the mountain with this umbrella and vest. These are the fascist soldiers, the Italian fascist soldiers who stopped him and then later let him go on. I was born in 1931 in Vienna, Austria, to a uh, quite prosperous family. When I was six and a half, Hitler simply marched in and next Austria to Nazi Germany. And then it was all over for me and my family because being Jewish. My parents had the good sense to know that they better get out very quickly. There was a lot of people who couldn't get out, friends who couldn't get out, who were in a camp, or, or somebody who committed suicide. Lots of people committed suicide in Vienna. They jumped out of the window right away when Hitler came. I mean, they couldn't take it. I mean, it was only much later learning about it that I realized just how bad it was and what the Nazis had done. And I think the main thing to understand there is you didn't have to do anything. You could be just a very private citizen and not look different from anybody else, not act different from anybody else. But if they found you had a Jewish grandmother, a Jewish grandmother or grandfather, even if your family had been baptized for 50 years and you were brought up, say, as a Catholic, even so, they would find you out and send you to the camps or try to kill you, to get rid of you. That's what the Nazis did. So many people now say something about it's like Nazi Germany. And because I was a refugee, they say, don't you think so? And I say, no, it isn't anything like it. Because I do think American democracy, there are a lot of things wrong right now. But I mean, we've had a democracy here for 300 years, you know, as opposed to Germany. People were incredibly poor and the country was devastated. So it was very easy for somebody to come in and be a dictator. The question often comes up, could it happen in another country? And I don't think so. In America, democracy as we have known it is threatened. But it's not that it's threatened only by Donald Trump and the Republicans, but it's threatened by the bad education where children and young people are not taught the basic fact about the separation of powers and American democracy. And where did American democracy come from? Today, when we have eighth graders who can't read and write, when civics courses have disappeared, and when geography is literally untaught, it's very hard to have a meaningful democracy in the United States. Our first aim then should be to restore primary education, as well as a meaningful media in which there's a real discussion of the issues. And that's my letter, signed Marjorie Perloff, Pacific Palisades. <laughs>